Good morning, pregame crew. It's 8.21 a.m. Eastern, 6.21 a.m. Mountain Time. Getting that out before I have to say all these 22s. It's August 19th, 2022. Good morning. Happy Friday. You're at the pregame show. You're hanging out with me. I'm Chart Guy Lori, and I'm part of the Chart Guys community. We teach technical analysis. So the webinar that I did the other night for futures, that promotion ends next tuesday i believe so if you're thinking about joining tcg we have that promotion if you sign up for the webinar you'll receive a recorded copy of it in the futures cheat sheet audio visual check please good morning topher luciano Lori, how are you doing hey ramir casey willow puff roger fernando andre rick samwise mal Basque, Ramon, Zero, RJ, Bobo, PWZ, thank you. Perfect. Glad it's working. Let me go get that link. I talked about it and didn't copy it. You get the link for the webinar if you're interested in watching that recorded video on futures. Thanks, Roger. Hey, Joe. Finally got the right link. Now let me go back. Thank you, Luciano. Let me go back. Is there any chart request? So I'll get started officially in seven minutes. If you're tuning in later in the day, you're like, what is she doing? She's just chit-chatting. I'll officially get started when this says 630 down here in the far right corner. I'll go over indices, commodities, crypto, and movers and shakers of the day. I have quite a lot of them, actually. We closed yesterday with a daily inside bar, and we broke that inside bar in overnight action, which we see happen often. A lot of the action happens overnight, which is why you need to learn how to trade futures. Doesn't mean you actually have to trade in and out overnight. You could just put in a top fish, put in your stop, and go night nights. Perfect, CCL, all right. CCL looks like we're breaking that pre-market low of 1014 1007 is your next support it's an hourly bear flag this breaking bear you're at 33 RSI so you're not oversold yet and bulls will be scouting a daily higher low which one of them did that offering I forget which one was it Norwegian but hourly bear flag we are searching scouting a daily higher low The problem is you're shorting in the hole down here. The short was over here when you were looking for a lower high compared to the prior day high. The short was here. And now you're down here with RSI at 32 on the hourly. That's not where I want to go short personally. It's all about location, location, location. You know, in real estate, that's what they say. Location, location, location. Well, it's the same thing in trading. They're totally different jobs and careers, but it's the same exact thing. Location, where you enter. What is your risk to reward I want meat on the bone I don't want to just grab two pennies and be done I want meat on the bone happy Friday Mary let's look at John Deere for Paul my friend potential hourly bear flag they had earnings that's not good on the blue chip stocks not good as far as being a large weight. Let's see, is it a large weight? We have a handy dandy tool. We can look up ETF DB, go to tools, go to stock exposure, and then type in DE. You can see all the different sectors that it's in and the weighting. Looking for a big one, XLI. It's 3.6% of XLI, so pretty decent size weighting. All right, back to John Deere. You got an hourly bear flag. You're bouncing after that bearish reaction, but bears are just looking to step in. You have a gap that happened, a gap down uh, from yesterday's close, of course, but you also have a gap down from after hours action. 15 minutes no longer oversold. I think this is a great short, actually. Your resistance 356.70 because because of this bounce it's giving uh the bull some reprieve but it's giving good location there's that word again for potential bears 
I don't know that I would be shorting it today, but it could work. Okay, going back, we'll get started in three minutes, three minutes. We don't have a lot of big data today. We have the rig count that we have every Friday, uh, but no big news. I think Barkin, the Fed, one of the Fed speaks today, but I don't think that he or she is a big um, hawk like Bullard. Bullard spoke yesterday and really rattled the market. Yep, BBBY got sold. The chairman of the board or whomever, I forget. He, he wasn't an activist. I think he was chairman of the board. He sold his portion and he said he had diamond hands. Well, in fact, he had paper hands. Bitcoin, I go over every day. So I'll get to that in just a second. Uh, I go over oil every day, James. Oil, I really, really like the chart on the daily. I am bullish energy right now. Nat gas has a beautiful bullish pattern. It could be a rising wedge, but I, I'm buying the bull narrative a little bit more. And then oil has that daily falling wedge. So just be careful out there, James. It's a Friday and we got the rig count today. I'll do one of those. ATAI, shroom, shroom name. It really didn't benefit from that MNMD push yesterday, did it? I guess 5% is good, but I would have ex anticipated more. You're just still stuck in this range here. I think I drew this the other day on this stock. And you're just getting tighter and tighter. As far as a trade right here, maybe buying a pullback. <laughs> One second. <clears throat> One second. Let me drink some water, y'all. Well, good. I'm glad you traded uh, futures. If you're going to trade Nat Gas and you're new to futures, I strongly suggest trading QG instead of NG. QG is a smaller contract. NG is a huge contract. So when it moves... 0 0.001 cents that's ten dollars for or against you so that's a lot of money it's a big big contract very volatile so i would trade qg if you're trading oil you can trade cl it's the big contract or qm is like the mid-size contract and m micro cl mcl is the smallest one so that's where i would start if i were trading just beginning to trading futures MNMD. I'll talk about it a little bit, Bobo. That's another shroom stock. This is actually a beautiful pattern. What do I call this pattern? If you've been here a while, tell the folks, what do I call this? I don't know what's up with me in these quizzes. I just like feeling, I just want to interact with y'all. I feel like I'm just talking to the screen sometimes. I know y'all are out there listening, but what is that pattern called that I like to call it? We're holding 50 RSI. This is bullish. A few more minutes. Oh, good, ER. I hope you were safe on that one. Okay, I'll go ahead and tell you. We have a delay. I understand that. This is angry chipmunk. No, yes, it is a rounded bottom, Kate. Trampoline pattern. This is that trampoline pattern. And here are the characteristics of the uh, trampoline pattern. It's squeezing. You have this gnarly compression here. And then that rounded bottom, of course, it's not a cup yet because we were not up near $1.44. But when they, the bulls, I call it turning and burning. When they start turning and burning this price, that is bullish. And you're holding those EMAs and it's just like you're pushing off. You're just pushing off like a trampoline. I like this pattern. Well, I got, I got excited. I told Jason this morning, I am super hyper and I only had one cup of coffee and I've been up four hours already. So buckle your seat belts and let's get started with the pregame show officially. This is who I am, Chuck Lori. If you want to give me a follow on Twitter, that would be lovely. I am part of the Chart Guys community and we teach technical analysis and what I do here every morning or attempt to do. Some days I do a decent job, other days it's I'm a little sketchy. 
But I go over indices, commodities, crypto, movers, and shakers of the day. We woke up to a bloodbath. What was our signal yesterday that things were looking a little bit like they were slowing down? What were we watching? Do y'all remember when I was on the Bitcoin chart yesterday and I just couldn't shake it? I think it was my best analysis actually out of all the things that I i went over yesterday it was one of the ones i was succinct in explaining was the six hour bear flag that we were looking at right here this is the candle we were on here nope here this is the candle we were on and i said six hour bear flag on bitcoin and i said at the time it looked like it had enough room for a daily high or low it did but I said the bulls had to get on it right then, right there, and keep that six hour bear flag from rolling over. If it rolled over, it would be our canary that equities could follow. Not should, but they could follow. And that's exactly what happened. Bitcoin lost that ever important 22666. And Ethereum, when I looked at it an hour ago, had not. Yep, it's still holding the 1656. So Ethereum is diverging a little bit bullishly from uh, Bitcoin, but Bitcoin was our canary yesterday. Ethereum and Bitcoin had six hour bear flags and they had enough room for daily higher lows, but the it's like the bulls, they didn't just step away from the bid. They jumped away from the bid. They would just stop playing defense and it was game over as far as daily higher low dreams for Bitcoin. And then on NASDAQ, it was that hourly 50 MA, the great wall of louisiana look at that rejection y'all one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven rejections i had to take off one sock to count that eleven but <laughs> that the great wall of louisiana i joking jokingly say that as the hourly 50 ma it's really important in my trading the hourly and daily 50 ma I like it. I see that algos respond to it. It was a great tell yesterday that despite these little pushes, we were getting up into the hourly 50 MA. They were not sustained pushes and bears kept pushing back and using this when you're in war and you hide behind something, what, what do they call that? Um, not a hedge, but like they build those rock walls and they're behind it so they could shoot at the enemy. Like this is the rock wall that the bears were using to just push down bulls. So hourly, we're not oversold. So typically, when we're in a daily uptrend, which we are, we're in a daily uptrend, we use first hourly oversold as an area to scout a potential daily higher low. Well, that already happened, and we didn't set the low. We've now broken that level. So that's, yes, Colby, you got it. Yeah, Colby. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so we've already gotten that first hourly oversold. So that didn't work. That means that the bears are really taking over control. So now we look for the four hour oversold. Where would four hour oversold be? Let's see. If you're interested in my chart setup, you can click on the link below in the video description and you will receive a PDF explanation of what all of these lines and colors mean. And we also have a YouTube video, how to set up your chart like Dan or Lori. Okay, so 13204 would be four hour oversold. And that would be, so that would be a head. Let's see. Yes, we would still be above our last daily higher low at 12963. Do y'all see what I'm doing? So let me go back to the four hour. Four hour oversold would be right there, 1320375. You see that? This is RSI level. It's an indicator on trading view and I toggle it on and off when I need it. So for first four hour oversold, tell me when I want to set an alert. Now I'm not saying we're going to get there, but it would be really cool if we did get there and st still have that daily higher low behind us protecting us. That would be a nice area to scout that daily higher low. And if bulls keep jumping away from the bid like they have in crypto, then we could just go and take out that daily higher low. Bears have plenty of runway. And do y'all remember the crazy lady yesterday talking about this head and shoulders pattern on the daily? It resolved to the downside. It worked. All right. 
Your next support on NASDAQ is 13342. Let me put a level of mark there so you can see it. And as always, when I use those horizontal rays, if you're looking for the support or resistance, I don't want to preach or throw out numbers at you like an auction. You can look at these light gray numbers over here and it'll tell you what that support and resistance is. So you have a resistance here. I was doing this on the four hour earlier. Yeah, so 13575, 13616, your next support from the hourly is 13342 and from the four hour, 1328. Five. Going back to ES now. ES, we're at the four hour 50 MA. And daily has plenty of room for a higher low. Plenty. I started with the NASDAQ because I tell y'all how Apple goes, the market will go. Apple no rolly, market no rolly. Apple rollover, market's going to most likely follow it. All right, so we're looking for a daily higher low on ES. Hourly, just it graced, uh, oversold grazed it but we don't care we got it over here as well so now we wait for four hour oversold to scout that higher low we have a potential hourly bear flag and every bear and their brother and sister baby bear mama bear and even goldilocks is waiting for the hourly lower high on es nasdaq ym and rty to short all right oops sorry didn't give you the levels Audio is quieter than normal. Well, I know I'm not quieter than normal, so sorry about that. I don't know. I didn't change anything. So uh, your next support, the low of the overnight move, 4241, and then below 4241 is 421975. And then we have a resistance up here. Let's stick with the four hour larger time frames, 429550, and then 430525. All right, RTY. RTY looked a little stronger to me. I want you to look at this. My up arrow right there. 1976 held. We broke it actually by $1.20 and bounced. So 1976, I'm going to call that a double bottom. Here, 1976, 1975. That's a pretty strong power move by the bulls to hold that when everything was pushing down so hard at that moment i thought that was pretty impressive hold by the rty bulls so if i'm looking to short today i'm not going to short rty if that makes sense and hourly is not oversold unlike some of the other indices yet on any bounce bulls bears mama bear baby bear they're all and papa bear they're all looking to short the next hourly lower high on a bounce and your resistance 2005 2006 double top double bottom 1975 1976 all right ym hourly bear flag and whomever was it you paul that asked about john deere whomever asked about john deere the, those types of names can really weigh on the dow these larger companies that are part of these these select companies that are in the dow and being such a big component of industrials will weigh on YM. So we have a potential hourly bear flag, but we are not oversold and bears are looking to, to top fish. So today, yes, we're oversold on so many different time frames, but my mindset is I'm going in waiting for bounces to short. I'm not looking for more bigger pushes down, pushes to the downside to buy. And you think, well, we're in daily uptrends. Why wouldn't you be looking to buy those pushes to the downside? It's because of crypto. Crypto is so weak. I feel more comfortable today as a bear. But again, I'm waiting for bounces because of location, location, location. I want a better location for any shorts that I put on. All right, VIX. So I had these little beautiful rectangles the last four days. I haven't moved any of them. And we got a four hour, let me show you. We got a four hour higher high on VIX. It's been a minute since we got a four hour higher high. We're running into the 50 MA. We couldn't take out 2116. Look down here, $20.93. So we have 23 cents, we're 23 cents from resistance and we couldn't break it on the daily. So are we setting a daily lower high? So that's my question mark up there. So we have a potential hourly bull flag. Let's see what the, the VIX bulls can do to turn this ship around. If I'm a VIX bull and a market bear, I want to see 21.16 taken out today. I think it is key for market bears to get continuation is to take that 21.16 out. Take it out. 
If not, if you're a market bull, you're looking for these pushes to the downside to buy. All right, so key resistance, 21.16, key. And look, we have plenty of room for hourly high or low, plenty of room. Even I could parallel park between here and here. That is a lot of room the size of Texas to get that hourly higher low. All right, Hang Seng a close, just kind of flat, which is kind of surprising considering the market weakness we're seeing. Hang Seng did not see that. The DAX is down 0.64%. So it's down uh, ever so slightly. And Luciano, thank you for reminding me. I put it in the... Uh, the chat room earlier today is month monthly op x and cnbc reported there's approximately two trillion dollars worth of options expiring today that usually brings volume and volatility so just be on the lookout for that and power hour will look different than most days but it i'm expecting and anticipating some potential volatility toward the end of the day all right now let's go to my favorite commodities actually i can't start there i gotta go with dixie Dollar is doing the Watusi up here. If you're a dollar bull, you are happy. This thing is flying. So on the daily, we've just V-shaped up. No trend change yet, but it is absolutely smashing metals. And it's also a headwind for equities. So this is one of the major reasons we are red today is that the dollar is on a tirade up here, just ready to roll over any bear that gets in its way. And it's really hurting the metals. And there was one metal that diverged this morning, copper. Copper was strong compared to silver and gold that was getting smashed. This is a, well, now this looks like a diamond bearish reversal pattern. Y'all see that? That's classic diamond. See it do this over here. But it was super strong compared to other metals that I was looking at. It was so early in the morning when I was looking at it. I'm like, have I not had enough coffee? Am I looking at the right chart? Because I went Dixie, then I looked at gold, then I looked at silver, and I'm like, what's going on with copper? They didn't get the memo. But congratulations, copper bulls, for that divergence. Back to gold. So gold is getting a little relief bounce. You see this hourly triple bottom, 1763, 1763, 1763. So hourly triple bottom testing the 21 EMA. And bears will be looking to top fish a four hour lower high, four hour lower high on this bounce. We haven't been over the eight EMA with a candle close since August 14th. Hey, Lori C out there, Lori Carlson, Aren't you ready for another gold trade? I am. Let's let's get another gold trade going, but not here, not here. We'll get our our turn. I did see a tweet, and I shared it in the gold thread over in commodities that the discretionary spending that's typically spent on spent on jewelry has gone down significantly this year, and that is one of the main, of course, users or uh, people that buy the gold are the jewelry makers, and they're just not buying a lot of gold because there's not a lot of demand for jewelry because of inflation. So I had never thought of that. I thought that was interesting. Look at that rounded top. Y'all see that? That rounded top. That's just bears slowly. So they start over here. Bulls push in, bears take over. Bulls push in, bears take over. And they slowly just start turning that ship around. And that's what makes those rounded tops and, and inversely for rounded bottoms. Okay, did I give you resistance? Next resistance, 1786. I know, Lori, we're going to get one. Don't you worry. But I'm most excited about the next two charts. Oil has a potential daily falling wedge that Dan has been calling out. If you're not watching his market recap videos, what are you doing with your life, first of all? But I, I bought this lower low. I discussed that with y'all yesterday. And I started out with just a few micro contracts, so not a big position, because I don't know that this falling wedge will confirm. It can continue to just resolve to the downside, and then I'm, um, you know what, up the creek without a paddle. So you have resistance 9103, 9505. I like a pullback buy here on oil, trying to nail that falling wedge on the daily. And this is what's getting me excited. Well, just besides trading in general and life that I get excited about. Let's look at uh, NG. on the weekly. Do y'all see this? Oh shoot, I didn't wanna change that one. So over here, we have this falling wedge. I'm just doing this quick. 
Wedge, please don't you come after me. This is just quick. So we have that falling wedge here. We have that weekly cup and handle potential over here. So that has me bullish XLE names with these bullish patterns on two of the main energy charts. So I'm bullish oil, bullish nat gas. We'll have to see if they resolve to the upside. That doesn't mean they're necessarily going to work. So because of these charts is why I have rig and rig had a great day yesterday and endo. That's why I have two of the names because of these bigger charts. So when I go look at certain sectors, I say, Ooh, that's bearish like Bitcoin. Then, okay, I'm going to go look at riot as a potential top fish. So on the next bounce, we're going to be looking to short riot and then oil. Ooh, that's a pretty chart. So let me go look for some XLE names. So that's how I do my scouting in the morning and many other ways that I do it as well. But that's just one thing. The so nat gas, we talked about nesting patterns yesterday. We had that weekly cup and handle pattern. So this isn't the weekly chart. I'm just kind of doing it here for, actually, let me go do it correctly. Man, I'm slow today, huh? That's the weekly. And then on the daily, you have a nesting pattern where you have a daily cup and handle nested within that weekly cup and handle pattern potential, not, not confirmed yet. And I love when we get these Russian like nesting dolls and we have a pattern within a pattern and I see cup and handles do it more often than any other pattern. And if you go to Bolkowski's pattern site, don't judge me that Amazon's one of my top uh, <laughs> links that I go to. Okay, so on pattern rank, you can see I've been in here a while, a bunch of times. So Bulkowski, and I'm not, probably not saying his name right, and he's updated these stats as of 7722. He has a computer that does all this back testing. So as far as top 10 reversal patterns and continuation, look which one has the top 10 upward breakout that it has the continuation patterns with the breakout. So the pattern confirms. It's a cup and handle. So that's why I get excited about cup and handles. The Pattern Site, and site is spelled S-I-T-E dot com if you're interested in studying up on your patterns. All right, so killed that horse. Apple. Apple looking for hourly low or high to short. And I go over Apple, Amazon, NVIDIA, and Tesla every day, kind of like my Wheel of Fortune top four names that I go over every single day. It doesn't mean that I think they have superior setups to other names. I just know everybody asked me about it. And plus, Apple's super important to the market. So I'm looking for a bounce to short on Apple, but I don't know that I'm going to go pick on the biggest bully on the playground and has been the biggest bully. Yet the setup is there. I would rather find a weaker name. So 173.12 was the low yesterday. And right now we're set to open up below that. So that would be a gap down gap down on Apple. So let's see how the bulls respond. Now, indices got those hourly oversold, right? And and they bounced. People didn't buy it for the daily high or low, and then we broke to lower low. Guess who hasn't had their hourly oversold yet? Apple. I'm trying to pull my notes up on the other screen. All the notes I have typed up for this show, I will copy and paste to TCG members as soon as I'm done. So on Apple, it's lost the hourly moving averages. First hourly oversold will be interesting. Are bulls that missed this huge run up, are they going to be hungry, hungry hippos and say, give me some of that? That's what I'm anticipating. So first hourly oversold on Apple. Really looking forward to seeing how the bulls respond to that. I say that like I'm going to Disney. I'm really looking forward to Disney. This is me. I'm really looking forward to first hourly oversold. Tell me you're a nerd without telling me you're a nerd. Okay, support 17220, then 17212. And your resistance of pre-market. This looks like a scam wick, so I'm not even going to quote it. 17412 and 17425. Amazon. Two of y'all want Amazon. Well, guess what? You're in luck. So you have this channel here. I'm more confident in this up line. The trend line on the top side than I am on the bottom side because of how many touches we got. Just strong, strong resistance. Come on, Amazon. Bounce into that trend line. I like that short. I got more things stacked up if I'm looking for evidence. Let's say we're making a case and we're a lawyer and we're looking for all the evidence. We want as much evidence as possible that there is resistance up there. 
with Apple, I don't have all that evidence lined up that it's a relative underperformer. Nope, Apple's a relative outperformer. So that's why I like this Amazon setup just a little more. Do y'all see how, gosh, I love it. I told you I'm hyper today. Do you see how RSI just got tased here at the 50? Just tased. That's when you know it's weak. You can see it better actually when I didn't have it blown up. But look at that. 50 RSI brick wall. Brick wall. The 50 RSI or touch of that plus at that trend line. Gimme, give gimme. Give NVIDIA. Okay, NVIDIA is interesting. It has relative strength. So I definitely, I have a box here just because of odds favor lower high compared to the high of day yesterday. But look who's holding the low of day. Our low of day yesterday was 181.83. 181 right down here. So we have a possibility if the market kind of continues its little bounce that we could just get an inside day because yesterday's range was so large. But NVIDIA is holding up better than the others. So what's, I didn't go look at, at the mothership. What's Simi's doing? 37.40. Yep, we're holding the low of yesterday as well for Simi. So y'all know Simi's are the fuel in the market's engine. So if Simi's are going to deviate today and hold up, that could be good for the market and keep us from seeing another leg down. Uh, AMAT, by the way, Paul, I just caught that out the top corner of my eye. AMAT had a ton of dark pool buying yesterday, blocks and call buying. Something was going on with uh, AMAT. Tesla, let me go to my notes on Tesla. It broke yesterday's low. Uh, it's skirting hourly oversold, watching for true oversold action during regular trading hours to see how these bulls respond. Okay, I can't do any type of hourly oversold during uh, after hours pre-market. I'm waiting for regular trading hours. I want to see another push down into true hourly oversold to scout a daily higher low going into next week with this uh, split, three to one split on August 25th. I like Tesla long, but I would love to see a true hourly oversold during regular trading hours. I have to talk faster. Okay, bros, bros before you know. Um, it looks like an hourly falling wedge. I drew this actually on the 30 minute, I think. Looks like I was smoking something when I drew this, actually. Oh, uh, no, it's on the hourly. Okay, that's right. So it looks like a falling wedge to me. I really like a dip by of bros. And we have support right here at 41.42. Yesterday, we hit 41.66. We're right there. Below 41.42, I throw the hourly falling wedge idea out the window. This one was an interesting one for me. Really interesting. Double Ds, we got double daily inside bars. Resistance yesterday, 1712, 16, support 1697. That is a very narrow range for this stock that typically has much bigger moves. We have an hourly EQ. So you have the high of yesterday as a resistance, then the high of, what day would that have been? Wednesday, support 1697 and 1693. This is a bullish pattern. We're holding 50 RSI, but if these, so if we were to break bear, and not get any follow through, I would be watching for that bull flag on a higher time frame. So in my, this case, the, six, the daily. This is a tight pattern with a squeeze holding 50 RSI. So, and CMG can do its own thing. It can be a honey badger or a money badger. It can totally do its own thing. It can deviate and separate from the market. It's not heavily weighted with the market. So. CMG could be a bull play today. We'll see how these double daily inside bars resolve. I thought about not bringing it up at all. I love this hourly pattern for to the bullish side, but it is extended on the daily. And whatever that word means as um, technical traders, extended doesn't mean a lot to us. So we'll see. And I had no true resistance over here to, to plot. So let's just go with hourly EQ and let's see how it resolves. Endo and rig have similar setups. Oil, we've got that daily falling wedge in play. They had bullish days and endo is a low float. So what I'm looking for is first five minute oversold during regular trading hours on endo and rig for potential setups. First five minute oversold during regular trading hours. This doesn't count. <laughs> exactly. Riot. I'm looking for a top fish short due to Bitcoin weakness. Again, I'm going to go a little faster. I've really, 
it took too long today. So Riot looking for a bounce short. And then these three names are the psychedelic names that saw these big runs yesterday. MNMD, CYBN, and Drug. So I would look for first five minute oversold during regular trading hours. And if it got an oversold during after hours like this one, then I go to 15 minute. I want first 15 minute oversold on drug on MNMD. I'm looking for first five minute during regular trading hours oversold and same thing with CYBN. Okay, GM had some news, by the way. Uh, I, I didn't read it, but obviously something good. So you have support here at $39, resistance at 40. <laughs> okay, I'm going to end on this one because it's just too good. Y'all see that? We got support at $39, resistance at 40, and support at $38. Don't you love how people say, well, if it goes up, your next targets are 40, 41, and 42. And if it goes down, your next targets are 38, 37, 36. Well, thank you, Captain Obvious. So... I'm just going to leave you with Captain Obvious and me chuckling with myself or at myself. Thank y'all so much for joining me. I really appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all putting up with me when I'm in my quirky moods and supporting the pregame show. Give me a follow on Twitter, Charkow Lori. Check us out at chartguys.com. And I put that link in here of the webinar and cheat sheet. If you didn't get it, I will pin it to the top. So it's pinned at the top of this chat in case you want to go watch that futures webinar. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day and weekend and use stop losses.